Small Business Tax Rate, the definitive tutorial for entrepreneurs and business owners. The IRS, under the tutelage of Congress, constantly updates tax legislation to boost the economy and maintain a level of fiscal pressure conducive for entrepreneurship and wealth creation. If you are an entrepreneur or a small business owner, watch this video to learn about business tax rates, how they affect your company, and how to plan your operations smartly to comply with fiscal rules while paying less taxes. Welcome back folks to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic if you were to ask me. And if you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today I want to talk to you about small business tax rate and the definitive tutorial for entrepreneurs and small business owners. Let's talk about, let's define small business tax rate. The small business tax rate for the year 2019 was a flat 21% for a C corporation and it will remain so for the 2020 tax year. Now, on average, in the last five years, the effective small business tax rate was 20%. Now, businesses pay different amount in taxes based on their entities, right? So if you are, for example, a sole proprietorship, you pay a 13% or 14% tax rate. Small partnerships will pay around 23-24% tax rate and small S corporation will face a 27% tax rate. Now, don't get me wrong, taxes are complicated. And the thing here is that many small businesses owners, they struggle to understand how their tax liability is determined, right? Many business owners don't even know the, their corporate income tax rate, what tax cuts they're eligible for, or what terms like pass-through income even mean. Now, in addition to income taxes, Businesses also have to pay payroll taxes, unemployment taxes, and other kinds of taxes. I'll talk about that later on. So to make things even more complex here, you have things like deductions, you have things like credit limitations to those deductions, and those, those items within the whole tax legislation, they can change from year to year, meaning you have to stay up to date on these changes to ensure you are meeting your tax obligations completely and accurately. Now, just kind of quickly give you a disclaimer here. We're not providing some kind of a fiscal advice here. Every business is different. I would strongly advise you to reach out to a specialist. He or she can be a CPA, a certified public accountant, an enrolled agent, an EA, or a tax attorney, or any anybody who has expertise in fiscal matters can help you. All right. Now, let's talk about the, the types of small business taxes. One of the great reasons why it is very complicated and convoluted for small business owners to understand the tax legislation is because there is not a single small business tax. What I'm trying to say here is that there is no single small business tax rate either. When it comes to business taxes, people are typically thinking about federal income taxes and how those rates apply to their business. Having said that, federal income tax is just one of myriad taxes your business might be required to pay. Let's talk about them now. So there are six types of business taxes in general that you have to be aware of. You have income tax that you know about. Most people are familiar with income tax. So people must pay income tax on wages, investment income, and capital gains, right? Those are called capital gains. This is the gain you make from the sale of property you own. A corporation, however, must also pay tax on the net income. So this is the income after accounting for expenses it earns every year. So LLCs, LLC stands for Limited Liability Company. LLCs, sole proprietorship, and certain other business types, on the other hand, they are considered pass-through entities. Now, pass-through entities means that the company itself, so if you take the example of a sole proprietorship or an LLC, does not pay income it earns at the business level but the owner of the LLC or the own the sole proprietorship pays taxes on the business income at the individual tax rate and reports the business income on their personal tax return so they report the income on their form 1040 it could be on schedule C or it can be on schedule K1 we'll talk about that later on now so income tax is the is the first type of uh, 
tax taxes if you will that a small business must cope with then you have employment slash payroll tax so if you have employees you're responsible for paying employment taxes right those those include the federal income tax withholding you have social security and medicare taxes that's the fica and you have federal and state unemployment taxes now if you have no knack for payroll tax matters or employment tax matter i would say you either hire a specialist or you hire a payroll company to manage your payroll tax liabilities and file the tax form on your behalf because remember employment taxes can be complicated so in, in addition if you fail to pay and file on time you might get stiff penalties and sometimes criminal prosecution next you have self-employment tax now if you are self-employed you are res responsible for paying self-employment taxes and this includes social security and medicare you must pay this tax if your net earnings from self-employment in 20 in 2020 were at least 400 dollars now remember that most businesses will pay half of the total amount of social security and medicare taxes on their employees wages and the other half is withheld from the employees paychecks and remitted by the business so if you are a self-employed you must pay the entire amount for this taxes on your own so instead of 7.50 percent of 7.65 percent of the income you're paying double you're paying 15.2 percent or 15.25 percent now there are some special rules that apply such as those for self-employed individuals who work for a church or a fishing crew we'll we'll talk about that in another show Another tax you need to know when it comes to small business is something called excise tax. Excise tax. So if your business is in a certain type of industry or sells, let's say, certain types of products and services, you might be responsible for excise taxes on these transactions and activities. Now, this tax is an indirect tax, meaning it is not directly paid by the consumer of the products. Often, the, ta the tax is included in the price of the product or service as with cigarettes for example and liquor businesses that sell products or services subject to excise tax are responsible for collecting the taxes and sending them to the IRS you also have sales tax now a sales tax if you will is the the state equivalent of the excise tax at the federal level because there is no federal sales tax in the United States right but you have all the 40 all the, the states in the in the union except a few and thousands of localities they levy sales taxes so business owners are responsible for calculating collecting and reporting sales tax to local and state governments now customers when they shop when they buy goods and services they pay sales tax on those goods and services at the point of purchase all right now remember that recently we had a court decision that said that even some e-commerce sellers must collect and report sales tax from out-of-state customers so as a small business owner or entrepreneur it is important you understand your state and localities rule on sales taxes another tax you need to be aware of is uh, property tax say you you own commercial property you know you have a brick or brick and mortar location or land then you'll have to pay a business property tax to the city or county where the real estate is located. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Number one here. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're also having a conversation around a small business tax rate, and I'm giving you the definitive, the definitive tutorial for entrepreneurs and business owners. Now let's talk about the timing for paying small business taxes. Now it is important that you know what the taxes are, but you also need to know when you have to pay them. Now the, the uh, m most individuals here in the United States pay taxes one time before a specific deadline that is set by the IRS. That's April 15th. Now, however, most business owners have to pay estimated income taxes and self-employment taxes on an ongoing basis. It's just a lot better to do this on a quarterly basis. Right. So at, so the last week of every quarter, you just send the IRS the estimated income taxes that you have collected during the quarter, not collected, that you owe. Now, estimated taxes, therefore, they become 
taxes you pay throughout the year. And this is based on what? This is based on a reasonable estimation of what you think your taxable income at the end of the year is going to be. So a business, if you are a business owner, you expect to owe more than a thousand bucks in taxes for the whole year, you must pay estimated taxes on a quarterly basis. Now, the, 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 the payments you make throughout the year are deducted from your total liability when you file your tax return. So federal income tax is a pay as you go tax and you can incur penalties and interest if you fail to make the required estimated tax payments when they're due. Let's talk now about the tax rates based on the type of business you have. The tax tax rate based on the type of whether you're a corporation, a C-Corp, an S-Corp, an LLC, a sole proprietorships, all right? Now, remember though that just kind of go back uh, two years ago, we had something called the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. That took effect in 2018 and it really reduced the U.S. corporate income tax rate from a maximum of 35%. That was huge. That was like, you know, yeah, it, it, it was a big, a big victory for companies. And I think it, it just makes sense. So the, the Tax Cut and Job Jobs Act of 2018 sort of lessened the income tax rate for corporation from a maximum of 35% to a flat rate of 21%. So therefore, no matter how much income your C corporation makes, this means you won't pay more than a 20%, 21% rather, rate on income. Now, if you take a dividend or a distribution from the business, there that is a that is subject to a different capital gains tax rate. Now, remember though that corporations pay a cor they pay a corporate tax rate plus taxes on dividends. So many people might say many people actually say that C corporations are subject to double taxation. That's for a C corp. Now we have let's talk now about S corp, ALCs, and general partnership, and even sole proprietorships. Those are called pass through entities. In other words, the owners of those businesses they report income on their personal tax return and they pay taxes at the individual tax rate and they do so on form 1040 and this can be through schedule k1 or schedule c of form 1040 individual tax rates are determined by the taxpayer's level of uh, taxable income and filing status whether they're filing single or joint so in general in individual income tax brackets are progressive meaning that people with higher income pay more taxes than those with lower income now let's let me quickly give you a summary of the small business tax rates you want to keep in mind. So income tax rate for C corporation, it is a flat 21% on business net income. Dividend tax rates for C corporation. Now, this is something that shareholders of corporations must pay. They must pay taxes on dividends or distributions from the business, right? So as of the year, the 2020 tax year, the rate of qualified dividends ranges from 0% if you earn under 40%, I mean under $40,000 to 20% if you earn over $441,450 in income. Let me repeat that. As of the 2020 tax year, the rate on qualified dividends ranges from 0% if you earn under $40,000 to 20% if you earn over four hundred and forty one thousand four hundred fifty dollars in income on non-qualified dividends sometimes also called ordinary dividends the dividend tax rate is equal to the shareholders regular income tax rate let's now talk about income tax rates for pass-through entities and sole proprietorships now again as i said earlier this 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 will depend on the individual taxpayers rate and this can in 2020 personal income tax rates ranged from 10 percent to 37 percent depending on income level and filing status for example a single filer who reports a hundred thousand in net in net business income will have to pay a 24 percent tax rate right so this is the one something you have to know now professional service businesses such as law firms and doctor's office they typically cannot claim the full deduction either. This is the small business tax deduction that w was allowed by authority to alleviate the fiscal pain that some small businesses had over the country. Let's talk about employment tax rates. 
Now, employment taxes include social security taxes, Medicare taxes, and unemployment taxes. Now, these tax rates are important and you need to know them. Now, social security tax is 12.4% on wages paid up to $137,700 for 2020. So employers will pay half of this amount, and this is 6.2%, while the other, the other half is deducted from the employee's wages. So if you are self-employed, then you pay the full amount as part of your self-employment taxes. Medicare tax, that's 2.9% of all wages paid to an employee. There is no wage threshold here, and the tax is split between employer and employee. There are additional Medicare withholding requirements for employees who make over $200,000 a year. Then you have the federal unemployment tax. This is 6% of the first 7,000 you pay to an employee. You can usually take a credit against this tax, this tax if you've paid state unemployment taxes. If you're entitled to the maximum 5.4% credit, the federal unemployment tax rate is reduced to 0.6%. In other words, 6% minus 5.4% 5, 5 is 0.6%. Another thing you have to be aware of when it comes to unemployment taxes is the state unemployment tax, though each state charges its own state unemployment taxes. Some states such as Alaska don't even have unemployment taxes. So the rate typically depends on the size and age of your company, the industry you're in, the historical rate of turnover at your company, and how many of your former employees have applied for unemployment benefits. We also want to talk about excise tax rate. Excise tax rate vary greatly based on the specific type of product or service you're selling. Now, if you go on the IRS website, www.irs.gov, try to read publication 510-510. That will give you an overview of the different types of excise taxes and rates. It's important to note that some states also charge excise taxes. Then you have sales tax rates. This also vary greatly based on state and locality. The first thing you need to do is to determine the sales tax rate for the, your small business. You want to find out something called an origin-based state or a destination-based state. So in origin-based states like Texas and Pennsylvania, for example, sales tax rates are based on where the seller or business operates. In destination-based states like Florida and New York, sales tax rates are based on the customer's location. Now, within states, though, rates might also differ based on which locality you're in and what type of products you're selling because it always boils down to two things, the products or services you're selling and where you're located. Now, property tax rates. Sales tax rates and property tax rates they greatly vary based on city and county. So when you purchase property, the property will be registered with the local tax authority and the agency will send you information about property tax rates and deadlines. So these taxes are levied on the property's assessed value, not on the purchase price or fair market value. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're still having a conversation here around the definitive tutorial for entrepreneurs and business owners. We're talking today about the small business tax rates. All right. Now, if you love the clarity and quality of the content so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell. We sure appreciate that. We definitely know that a lot of people uh, love how we explain things. And uh, please turn on the notification bell so you are aware when we release a new show. And we do so every single day, rain or shine. Comment below, share and like. The state small business tax rate. Now, in addition to federal states, your business must comply with state and local tax obligations. Now, we have Wyoming and South Dakota that do not levy a state tax rate. But other taxes do. Other states do. So, all states levy a tax or charge of some sort of levy on business income let me repeat that all states except south dakota and wyoming levy a tax or charge of some sort on business income so there are three main types of uh, 
taxes for state small business taxes. You have the corporate income tax. So in most state, C corporations must pay a corporate tax rate of 4% to 9% on net business income. Then you have something called the gross receipts tax. So a few states, including Texas and Washington, they will charge you a gross receipts task, tax instead of a corporate income tax. So gross receipts tax is levied on the business gross sales instead of net income. So a business usually can't take deductions before this tax is calculated. And then you have the franchise tax. So some state charges a franchise tax in addition to or instead of a gross receipts tax or income tax. Now, how do you calculate that? A franchise tax is calculated on the value of a business stock or asset and usually ranges from 0.1% to 0.9%. All right. Now you have to understand though that even if a state doesn't charge individual income tax, your businesses might still have tax obligation, right? I mean, for example, New Hampshire, everybody knows that New Hampshire does not levy an individual income tax, but it does have a corporate income tax and a franchise tax. In addition, states might charge their own equivalent of payroll taxes and excise taxes. So sales taxes are exclusively as the state at the state and local levels. Now let's move on to the impact of credits and deductions on your small business tax rate. As you know, the tax laws are always convoluted and complex. So even though you have to pay taxes, the authorities have made it very well. A very, I would say they have put a, a nice provision in the tax laws that allow people to deduct credit to have credit and deductions. In other words, they are lowering their ultimate tax obligation. Now you have, uh, there are several factors that could affect your tax bill. You have tax deduction. So many business owners will take advantage of, uh, tax deductions. I'm talking about home business tax deduction, for example. And uh, remember that some deductions can make a huge difference to your bottom line. We just finished an entire show on section 179 deduction, which allows businesses to deduct the total cost of an asset like machinery or a vehicle in a year of purchase. You also have net operating losses, null net operating losses that that allow companies to reduce their tax rate and to re also reduce the tax liability. And then you have the tax credits. Now your business could also be eligible for tax credits that can reduce the ultimate amount of taxes you pay, as well as your effective small business tax rate. Now tax credits are better than deductions because what they allow you to subtract the amount of taxes you owe on a dollar for dollar basis. All right. So ultimately because of deductions and credits, Two businesses with the same net income for the year could end up paying different amount of federal income tax if you think about it. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still uh, talking about small business tax rates, and I'm giving you a, the, the ultimate guide for entrepreneurs and business owners. Now, let me give you some ideas for managing your small business taxes, paying your taxes. You want to make sure that you have a reserve. You want to put money aside ahead of time. You know, experts are saying that you should allocate as much as 40% of your income of your business income to cover state and federal taxes each quarter. The best practice is to set aside money to pay taxes. You want to do this in a bank account that is separate from your business's day-to-day -day finances because the last thing you want is to start using is start tapping into that cash that fiscal cash to finance your operations because when the end of quarter comes and you're not and you're late on your fiscal uh, fiscal duties you're getting penalties and in some in some cases some rare cases you're getting some kind of prosecution criminal prosecution right so you don't want that you don't want to accidentally spend money that was earmarked for the IRS you can even set set up automatic transfers from your business bank account into a separate account so that you know you are always putting away money to cover your tax bill, right? Now, if you miscalculate and end up underpaying what you owe, like I said, 
you don't have to worry too much because the IRS is not gonna is not going to punish you right away. Most business owners can avoid the underpayment penalty if they pay as much taxes as much in taxes each quarter as they did the previous year. You can also have a meeting with your tax accountant once a quarter. So every quarter, maybe the last week of the quarter, you just have a, a, sit, a sit and talk with uh, your accountant, your CPA or your EA, your enrolled agent, and you're able to review your, your tax rates, your tax liabilities, and whether or not you are underpaying or overpaying. And if you do this every quarter, you don't have to do, you don't have to do this every month. Do this every quarter, you should be able to have a, a great idea of where you are. Now, determining your small business tax rate. At the end of the day, understanding and meeting your tax requirements are kind of complicated. Now, and it's not your fault. It's not you're not your company's not the only one struggling to 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 cope with the tax rates and the tax legislation here. There are myriads of taxes to consider. Think about it. Your small business tax rate will differ based on your entity type, whether you're a C corporation, S corporation, LLC, sole proprietorship, general partnership, limited liability partnership. In addition to that, there are de deductions and credits to incorporate as well, which is again, go back and talk to a specialist, talk to your tax attorney, to an enroll agent or a CPA. They will help you understand the types of taxes your business is responsible for and it will also help you make sure that you are paying your correct small business tax rate all right i will talk to you another time but before I, I go let me just recap today's conversation we spoke about small business tax rate give you a definition a quick definition the types of small business taxes income tax employment tax payroll tax self-employment tax excise tax sales tax and property tax I also spoke about the timing for paying small business taxes, the tax rates by type of small business, individual, so income tax for C corporation, dividend tax rates for C corporations, income tax rates for pass through entities and sole proprietorships, employment tax rates, excise tax rates, sales tax rates, and property tax rates. I also spoke about state small business tax rates impact of credit and deductions on your small business tax rate and ideas for managing your small business taxes. I will see you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>